Ooh. Listen to that squeal. That little squeal. That sexy squeal. What have we got here? AV transfers. Whoa, what is this little tube TV? Oh, it's not so little. That's 21 inches, baby. British television. Oh, can't see the label. Can I see the label? Well, you'll have to believe me when I tell you it's a Sobel. S-O-B-E-L-L. -S -O uh, -L. Sobel. Right. I hear high frequency. <laughs> But I don't see no picture. Let me see. Whoa! Dun, 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 dun. Whoa! Let's see if we got sound. Wow! That came out pretty quick. Well, here we have a very nice new addition to my extremely bloated collection of electronics. Let me take you back to 1960-something when television was a fashion. And you could outdo your neighbor and say, Hey, buddy, you got that 8-inch black and white. Check it, my 21-inch. Yes, even in those days, people used to fight with each other and um, outdo one another. Bigger houses, bigger cars, and uh, this time, bigger TVs. There you have a 405-line picture courtesy of something called a gosh the name oh a hedgehog a hedgehog <clears throat> hedgehog standards converter this is what television looked like in the uk before pell television came online that is a vhf signal yes 405 line used vhf here in the uk I guess because it was more comparable to what was in existence at the time on FM. Um, and I'm sure there are a lot of other good reasons. I, I don't know any of them, but I would imagine power and range was a consideration. Um, this is a VHF only set, 405 line. It's the first of its kind that I have owned. And it's a valve pure valve set fully uh, recapped with a nice healthy tube and the 405 line standard is purely a black and white standard there was no color I, I don't know if it predates NTSC um, five to or at least five to five lines I would imagine 405 line would predate five to five line but um, I'm no expert I just enjoy vintage and rare electronics. So here is, let me put that uh, audio off. This, uh, let me bring this set round a little bit this way. Oh gosh, and let's just have a look at the controls. Okay, I seem to have stopped myself recording somehow. I'm really, I need my noddy badge today. <laughs> um, let's just take a close up look at this. We've got controls here. We've got a lit display. We can change it. To different channels not really getting much in the way of snow between channels which is interesting but channel 8 there we go contrast no color adjustments I'm afraid because there ain't no color but this is just a really a very interesting looking set because if you look at it for 1960 I suppose early 60s <clears throat> It's a really slim line. All vol chassis. Uh, we've got sexy things on the back here. We've got linearity, height, hold, and hold. Antenna. This is a Sobel T293. Apparently can run off DC or AC. Apparently DC households were a thing in those days. Gosh, I'd hate to get my finger stuck in a DC socket. Um, if you look in the back here, you'll see, I must really take the back off and have a look at the, the valves. But, uh, yeah, and then plugged into that is this little doodad. This is where the real clever stuff happens. This is a Hedgehog standards converter with an RF output. So you can change the frequency there. 
and it's got video. Has it got audio? Now that I think about it, do I see an audio jack? No, it must have audio. Oh, sorry. I'm talking rubbish. That must be a video out. Oh, I wonder what that does. I wonder if you could take that into a normal TV and see what that does. Hmm. I'd almost be interested to see what it does on a 6 to 5 line TV or a 5 to 5 line TV. Huh. Anyway, and here we've got the um, flashing light which shows you that it's not getting a signal. So it automatically generates that test pattern when it's not available. And you've got left and right. <laughs> all the good that'll do sound i guess it's a very unassuming little box incredible really and that's where the clever stuff happens that gives us a signal but this tv would not work or display anything without that do a hickey <clears throat> so i guess if you were filming a movie or something and you wanted authenticity then you would take one of these sets and put it on the set i mean look at this thing it's it's like a veneer, I think. It's, it's very smooth to the touch. It feels a bit like a piano. You can actually feel the warmth at the back here. I guess that's the way. <gasps> the tubes are rolling. <gasps> What's on the other side? Oh, nothing. Just wood. But it's a beautiful condition cabinet. I, it's one of these cabinets that's so thin that I think if you were to drop the set even 10 centimeters, it would crack that case. It's like just barely, barely a case. But... Uh, really very nice i'm gonna have to get some video going through this and, and i'll do a few more experiments let's have a look there we go oh. wow there we go <whistles> oh. there you go i like that now i am not a techie when it comes to valves i just very appreciative that I was able to get a set with healthy valves and a healthy tube. Hopefully it will stay healthy. Uh, this is not going to be its final place of uh, living, but it's the place where I could kind of get it stored for now. While I do my work, I'll probably put some MTV or something through it. <laughs> what is the set like? See, let's assume 1965. Let's be generous. 65, so we're looking 35 plus 55 plus 57 years old, at least. Wow, it's older than me by quite a margin. So now when you put these sets off, you've got to actually turn down the brightness, right? And then you kill the power. And there's the power going. Because if you don't kill the, the... Oh, no, that's not right. That's not right. Let's get rid of that horrible... Get rid of that thing. Where's where's that going? Go away. Go away. I don't want that thing on my screen. How do I get rid of that thing? There's obviously a way to do that. That makes it brighter. We don't want that brighter. No, no, no. Not too sure why that's doing that. I must just check if that's... That's going to cause a burn. We, we definitely, definitely don't want that on the tube. But I thought if you turn the controls down, you would avoid that. Interesting. I suppose you can only avoid that to a degree. It's crazy that you can still adjust that brightness even when the set is off. That's crazy. Anyway, so that, that's a first look at this Sobel. Sobel. British made. Televisiones. Fascinating. Um, all these old sets are fascinating to me because coming f originally from South Africa, where we only got television in 1976, we didn't have television. Before that, um, uh, television sets that predate that are, are fascinating to me, especially ones that, you know, have a totally different um, display system. I mean, wow. I'd imagine this is the 25 frames a second. Um, but with the VHF modulation and 405 lines without color. So pretty amazing stuff, I've got to say. So this is Howard from AV Transfers with a little bit of a retro show and tell. And uh, I'm going to try and get that uh, standards converter hooked up to a, a normal television just to see if we can produce an image and, and what, we, what we can see on, on a 6 to 5 line set. Um, fascinating stuff. 
as always, cheers, cheers for now. Have a good one.